we have a special guest in the house. Now, this is somebody that everyone is familiar with. Now, I'm talking about the one and only Nollywood actor. And, well, you can't really cage it, Alex Ekubo. How are you doing? Who is everyone familiar with? I'm looking around. Oh, me? I helped you now. Take it. Oh, my bad, my bad. Yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing? How are you doing? Very well, very it well. It is so great to have you in the studio with us. It is so us. good to be here. So let's start with um, you. Let's get to know you. For some of the fans that really don't know how it started for you, tell us a little bit more about Alex <laughs> Well, um, um, honestly speaking, uh, my journey into the industry started in 2010 when I emerged the first runner up at the Mr. Nigeria contest at the time. And afterwards, you know, before then I've been acting, but, you know, um, after that it kind of came with, you know, level of um, attention and um, and um, buzz. So I used that to my advantage in the industry. I was getting more roles as an actor, and that kind of, you know, was my claim to fame. Yeah, so um, at what point did you decide or figure out that look, acting is something that you really wanted to enjoy? I mean, because the Mr. Nigeria competition did give you some sort of a Face, so why did you want to go back into acting? Um, well, in 2010, because like I said, before then, I was, you know, I was doing a bit of acting here and there, yeah. but it was um, neither here or there as well. And then um, um, I had just graduated law at the time. I studied law at the University of Calabar in 2008, so I was still trying to figure out, okay, what I want to do, law school, NYC, and all of that. And then along came Mr. Nigeria. So I was like, okay, you know what, this has been what I've always wanted to do, so I had to channel that energy and that attention to, you know, uh, my craft as an actor. Alright, so how do you um, combine acting and modeling? You know, people always ask me that. I don't know if I'm an actor turned model or a model turned actor, but I've been acting long, way before, um, before Mr. Nigeria, way before, you know, any of the modeling gigs um, that I've gotten. People just assume that because the claim to fame is Mr. Nigeria, then therefore, you know, you're a model. Far from that, I'm actually an actor. And then um, now I'm primarily an actor, you know, I can almost say 100%. I can't remember the last time I was on a runway, probably like four years ago or three years ago, four years ago, yeah. Um, so yeah, and now, so I don't do any modeling, you know. What do you, what do you love acting? What do you love I love it because I think, I think. Is I think, it for, for the bills or? Nah, you have to love, you have to love it. Just like everything in Nigeria, you have to love it for the arts. You have to love it because it gives you joy. It's not about the money. Um, I love acting because I feel it's the best job in the world. You know, I get to live the best of both worlds. You know, um, in this movie, I'm a doctor. In the next movie, I'm a lawyer. In the next movie, um, you You're know, husband with three. You know, so yeah. So yeah. it's just that variation of characters and that multiple personality that I have to juggle. You know, at times, you know, um, it's just it's this, it's really fascinating. And then the job comes with a lot of what I love to do: traveling, meeting people. And um, just generally, you know, living other people's lives. Or like your favorite persons you've worked with in the industry? <sighs> you know, I mean, I get asked that a lot. I, I think everybody, because, really you know, Alex. it's personality, you know, it's like asking me my favorite interviewer. Okay, so what right about? Now, you are. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about the worst persons you've worked with? I mean, there has to be something. Give me something. It'll take. Um, so I attended a boarding school. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, very comfortable around people. I understand people easily and I know how to um, sponge my way in and out of situations. So it'll really take, you know, being the devil for me to... Because um, a lot of times I've had people say, oh, this person is a horrible person to work with. And then as soon as I'm with the person, it's the person is amazing, you know? I think it's that Alex effect. You know, I kind of rub off on people the right way. So. For me, I've not had any worse experience. Maybe there are worse people, but when they see me, they bring their good hmm. game. Okay. okay. Well, you know, everyone, even Beyonce, has haters. So, what's the worst thing you've heard about yourself? I mean, everybody has haters. You know what, what is I mean? the worst and thing then, you've heard about you? I've I've heard a lot of things. You see, I'm too busy working. I don't even hear the rumors. Someone said that, who's that? Band. I'm too busy, I don't even hear the rumors. Yeah, that's what he said. So, you know, when you're busy working, you see, you're on a journey, when you're running, you don't have time to listen to every dog that barks, because it's just distractions, really. Yeah. So I don't let it get to me, I don't let anything. Because I've come to see the industry, I've come to see people that I admire being pulled down and pulled back by every single comment online. And most of these people are just saying it to get your attention. I had someone who 
had to say something negative to me one time and then when i replied the person that sent me a dm i was like oh god bless you bro i'll work on it and then when i replied and the person that sent me the oh sorry i just trying to get your attention because you celebrities when you know we tell you you're good looking you dress well you're a good actor you don't answer but since somebody says oh this then you're now russian so it's just attention seeking and i don't let it get to me at all okay so you know i had to do my research and i saw a lot of you know comments that are really not so nice but i just really want to put it out there are you gay no so why like because it's really, really frustrating. Like, I feel like you should write a paragraph telling these people to stop, especially yeah, with you, that you, comment. You, you, you can't talk about, like I said, I don't turn back to answer every person that comments or says anything about me because people always say what they want to say about you. So whatever right. helps you sleep at night, however that affects your bank account. If you're thinking that I'm gay helps you sleep better, fine. If you're thinking that I'm not helps you, whatever, just do it. Alright, so um, there's always a conversation about you in Nollywood and oh, no, does that offend you? And you know, sometimes when they get to maybe indirectly discredit your work. Well, Chris, I, I don't let it get to me. Um, first of all, I always say this I won an award in America. Um, I think uh, the Golden Icons Movie Awards in, uh, a couple of years ago, five years ago. And then on that stage, I had a lot of you know, my senior colleagues, and I just said, I want to stand on this stage and thank everyone that has been there before me. And I went on to name drop. Desmond Elliott was in the crowd, you know, with the Dominic. I just said, thank you guys for following your dream because I have a dream today because you guys followed your dream, your dreams. These were the people that did it painstakingly when it was uncool to be an actor, when you can't even tell your dad you want to be an actor. Now, not totally everybody wants to be an actor or a footballer or a musician. You know, there was a time when it wasn't even heard of, when there were no endorsement deals, when there were no millions of followers on Instagram and Snapchat and all of that. And then there were people that painstakingly paid their dues to get the industry to where it is. I feel like it is just rude uh, for someone to come out and say, oh, this is old Nollywood and this is new Nollywood. Yeah. What is that? I don't even know what that means. I don't even know on what basis that judgment is being found. I mean, like, what exactly are you talking about? I mean, the Montelas, the Rajkumar, Yeah, well, but then, then at, at the, the point, the well, at the point, I would be old. You can't get, you can't get RMD to come and play a role that I will play. So are you saying, are you judging an entire industry by the age of a group and set of people? I'm not going to be Alex forever. I'm not going to be my Titus forever. I'll get to well, my... Well, you know, it, it's, it's the, you know, it's not necessarily about the age if, if we're to get in there because now every movie coming out you know you're going to the cinema to watch it but mm -hmm. then you know these people had no internet but they were still you know pulling through i'm trying to figure out your point the the playing field the game is still the same the playing field has changed it's like growing up when you're playing football in the back of your yard and suddenly you have a football field and then you have an international football field yeah. it's the same game things have just changed 15 years ago they didn't have cinemas now we do we didn't have online platforms now we do so it's just the same thing, it's just a different playing field. Alright, so how would you how would you rate the growth of Nollywood, you know, ten years ago? I mean if you're looking at Hollywood you see more um, you see Game of Thrones, you know, more theatrical in it, more you know I'm just like comparing Nollywood and Hollywood, like what do you think has changed over time? I mean you've been in the business for a long time. What would you say has changed drastically? I would say this Nollywood is not where um we want to be, but we're certainly not where we were. It's a work in progress. We're growing. There's a lot of you know influx of you know international ideas, foreigners and multinationals coming in. Um, film business is a money-based business. There's so much you can achieve if you have a budget. Yeah. The technical, the technical um, part of it, the locations, the the talents, the cast. So there's just so much you can achieve with this money. And now gradually we're beginning to see, you know, that money being invested in the industry. Yeah. You know, we with great movies like uh, my, my, my my brother and friend AY's movie, breaking the Guinness Book of Record, yeah. you know, smashing three hundred million and above and you have all those movies making big numbers. People are beginning to look and say, hmm, investors are saying, okay, so there's a possibility of return on investment. So now yes. I can put hundred million in a movie. Do you know what hundred million in a movie would do? There's so much you can achieve. You can literally build a house and destroy that house. You can literally buy a car and blow it up. So it's all about the budget, and that's what people want to call the new Nollywood. But it's just the same thing. Just, you know, same toilet, different dump. Oh, okay. <laughs> really fantastic. Well, let's get personal. So what is happening? I mean, we see on blogs and all of that, but we don't really want to 
I mean, you haven't come out to say anything yet, so please. Let me help you, Daddy. Okay. There are two things I don't talk about, my relationship and my finances. Why is that? Just know I'm not missing any meal and I'm far from being lonely. Okay, so why is that, though? I mean, because a lot of celebrities put their stuff out on the internet. What is your take well, on Well, I am that? not a lot of celebrities. Yeah. For one, I'm not a celebrity. What's a celebrity? Let me see. Do you know people I consider celebrities? I think Chris Brown is a celebrity. Rihanna is a celebrity. Beyonce is a celebrity, for God's sake. I say to myself, until they can spell my name and surname correctly in Kuala Lumpur, in Bangkok, then I haven't started. So there's still more work to be done. So I'm not even a celebrity. I'm just a kid, you know, um, following his dream, acting, taking it one movie at a time. All right, what do you think about people putting their personal stuff it's, on the it's internet? It's totally up to them, you know. Um, I mean, I, with life, yeah, there's no rule book to it. There's no yardstick to say, okay, this is how you should go about it, or this is what you should do. Whatever works for you. I do me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what works my boat my what works my boat might sink yours. You know what I mean? So, if that works for you, go for it. If this works for me, this works for me. I never look at what, I never worry about what the next person is doing. Yeah. I'm just in my own world, in my own zone. All I'm about is, you know, Constantly trying to better myself, trying to, I mean, no competition with nobody, just trying to better myself, be a better version of myself, be a better um, uh, version of my craft and all I do, and that's all I worry about. Fantastic. Um, give, give us a random fact that nobody knows about Alex. I mean, so not something we would find in any blog. I'm a very spiritual person. I once said if I end up in hell, I'll feel bad because of my religious background. My dad is an elder in church, my mom is an evangelist, I was in the choir, I was in the choir, my sister was an usher. Um, I'm quite spiritual as, as opposed to what many people see about me, and when I, people see and hear, but when I hear this, they were like, ah, you know, if you really know me, you wouldn't know that. I fast every Wednesday, no matter where in the world I am, for the last four, four years. I constantly pay my tithes, you know, once I get it. So, I'm quite spiritual, I'm quite level-headed, I'm quite grounded, you know. I might not look it, but then I'm really, really deep. Okay, so you pay your tithes. And then, yeah. you know, we know the leader of the Friendship um, Nation movement, mm. Daddy Freeze, is always, you know, saying something about people, you know, tithing and all of that. It's been very controversial. What yeah. is your take on that? I mean, somebody constantly um, saying what you are doing or what you believe in is wrong and putting it in your face every single time. Then again, um, in line with, you know, what I, my beliefs, I never like to jump on another another man's boat, you know what I mean? I never like to rain on another man's parade. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do, you know what I mean? It's it's all you. I'm doing me, you can do you. But I pay my tithe. And um, people come up with all these excuses of, oh, the pastors will use this for this. I mean, just like the Bible said, on that day, this great man of God that we see and reverend, um, they would be in hellfire and you and I would be in heaven. That means there will be a lot of there are a lot of fake men of God around here today, around the world today. Um, people always have a reason to once it once it once it once it concerns God or spirituality, people find a reason to say, Oh, oh, we're not gonna do this because of that. Every day plane plane crashes, but you still fly. Every day there are accidents on the road, but you still go. Every day you, you get heartbroken, but you still fall in love the next day. But the moment a man of God does something that falls short of the glory of God, they say, oh, kill him, I want his head. Let me say this. People always forget this. They are, he is a man of God. Man first, and then God. He is not God. It's just, if you go to a wrong a place where you feel, oh, this man of God is misled or whatever, fine, take yourself out of there and find somewhere else. It's just... All right, so um, on a lighter note now, because I mean, just got to church and get back. So my eyes are like, okay. <laughs> Alex, okay, great. So, tell us your relationship with your friend, um, Ike Abuna. Like, explain that. You know, you guys are always at each other. Like, oh, I don't know like that, the that's bromance. My driver. That's your oh. That's my okay. <laughs> I mean, Ike. You know, I mean, these are my boys. Ike, you're me. Um, if a, you know, um, if a big brother. No, 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 no. If a Henry, friend of mine, you know, okay. my friend from university. What did you know? He said no, 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 like. Oh, brother, no. like it's not some like okay. you know you want twenty five Sorry. Naira. No. No. Yeah. no. Okay, no. Maybe do I said no 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 <laughs> no there's nothing, you know. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. So um yeah, Ike is cool. Ike is cool. You know, it's my brother. Um <laughs> he's my brother. I don't know what else like I'm your saying. relationship with him, your bromance helps you both to stay sane in the industry or, or it's, it's kinda of hard. It's kinda of hard, you know, getting in the industry, you know, you've come to realize a lot of people who are not real, who are not real, um who are not what they say they are, who, are, who don't appear as, you know, what they um, what they portray on TV. And then when you find that one person who, this person thinks like, this person has a level head on the shoulder, this person has ideas, and this person, you know, I think they say this, I say this, everybody has demons, so just find that person whose demon agree with your own demons. Okay. 
So I think I guess demons are doing my own demons, so we're cool. All right, now we know you both have demons. So <laughs> All right, so over this um, the last weekend, uh, you know, it was very controversial in the sense that uh, Noble Iwe did make some comments about um, Yahoo and all of that informing the EFCC that some, you know, celebrities or some of these uh, record labels and all of that have been used, you know, to frontier this whole fraudulent act and all of that. What is your take on that? You know, hearing that some celebrities might actually be involved in, you know, this uh, very criminal. Did act. he say some or all? No, he didn't say. He didn't say all. You can't be all. Okay. Yeah. So what do you? Well, I don't know about that? that, and then whatever it is. You see, when making statements, I'm always careful. I studied law, and there's what we call fallacy of hasty generalization. Okay. You know, um, that's when you group an entire set of people by the actions of one or two of, of persons in that industry or in that sector. So I don't think it's smart for anybody to come out and say all entertainers. I don't think he did. I don't. I know he's smarter than that. I don't think he did, but whatever it yeah. is, I don't know. Is it like know. record labels and stuff? Well, just like everything, I'm, I'm sure they're good and bad, you know, I don't know. What, what is your advice to the youth of, Ni the youth of Nigeria, you know, with this Yahoo, Yahoo men and, and of course drug abuse, because that is also, you know, a pressing issue. Yeah, um, first of all, say no to drugs. You know, drugs is, is bad. Um, I, what you start out as a joke, what you start out for fun, can turn into a habit. And next thing you know, you're addicted, you're dependent on that. And I've never seen anybody who is being successful from using drugs. You know what I mean? It's just a temporal way out. Like, I have friends that I talk to and then when they need to smoke and then they say, oh, I need to smoke, I'm going through it. I'm saying, okay, you know, you know that thing is just in your mind, right? Where you just think, oh, I'm going through a lot and I need to just smoke. It doesn't help the situation anyway. I feel like drugs and substance abuse is just like a rocking chair. It gives you what to do, but it takes you nowhere. So you're just going back and forth, but you're not doing anything. So I'd rather pick up myself, think clearly, and try to navigate myself through that situation as opposed to resorting to drugs. It has ruined a lot of, of youth. I recently stumbled on a documentary um, done by the BBC uh, yes. as regards codeine mm -hmm. use and then just looking at youths that can be actively involved in positive things in Nigeria, just going down that drain and being um, suffering withdrawal symptoms and just being addicts and being chained is disheartening. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. It's only going to cause hurt and pain for your families and loved ones. It's just, it's not worth it, really. It's not worth it. And then as regards, um, as regards Yahoo, I've, I know I know this is a very delicate sub subject, and then I feel like you always say, hey, but we're trying to look for jobs. There's no job. So, do you now, would you now rather resort to, resort to um, something illegal? I mean, think about it. This is how I think about it. Um, I always think about things in five years. Okay. So, I ask myself, you know, being an entertainer, sometimes you, co you come across situations where you, mo you want to do something to look a type of way. And I ask myself, is it sustainable? Can I do it? Can I sustain this lifestyle, you know, for five years? And then I'll say no. I always want to think, if I do this now, would it affect me in five years? I'll say no. So if you're going to do something illegal, think about it. In five years, if you get caught and you end up in jail for just temporal satisfaction, is that yeah. worth it? I mean, I know that it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's almost impossible to make it in Nigeria. I mean, I recently posted a post on Instagram one time. Is this guy trying to go through like wires and said, this is me trying to make it in Nigeria legally, you know, without yeah. something illegal. So it's hard, but then there are still people, let us not dis discredit the efforts of other hardworking Nigerians. There are still people out there making it legitimately. Yeah. There are soccer players, football players out there with their talents, putting the world on the map. They are entertainers. I mean, I've, I've, by the grace of God, done everything I've done without being involved in anything illegal, without doing any drugs or any fraudulent activity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there are still people out there who are still making it without doing illegal things. They are still designers out there. Your make culture is still out there, putting Nigeria on the map and, and Africa ultimately, just by being an honest designer. So why do you think Yahoo Yahoo is the way out? Yeah. Please Great. guys, please guys. All right, fantastic. So before we let you live, uh, let's know your plans, Alex Akubo. What should we expect from you? You see me, I'm more of um, a silent dancer. I never like to come and review plans. I'm always working. I'm always constantly juggling things, trying to um, piece things together, and always trying to. Um, um, so I, I move in silence, no sirens. You know what I mean. So I have a lot planned out for the year. I have so much we've done already. We've done a couple of great movies. We have a lot of great movies coming out. Um, 
we have an awful, 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 awful lot coming out really soon and hopefully you guys will still be there to support, to support the brand and everything. All right, thank you so much for coming. We do wish you all the best. This has been very amazing. Thank you. I just want to say thank you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me and constantly um, finding my flame. God bless you guys. You guys are amazing. And, um, you know, trust me, I can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Believe in yourself. Believe greatly in yourself. Don't let nobody tell you different. You know what I mean? Like, um, here where I am today, if you think that's anywhere worth being at, without knowing anybody in the industry, without having any godfather or any godmother or any having to do anything illegal, you know, don't do things because, um, uh, okay, it's the shortest way out, okay, don't sleep with someone to get a job, don't sleep with this one to, um, I'm a live and let live, live kind of person, I have no, nothing against homosexuals or homosexuality, if that is your calling, then so be, but don't do it because I've never had to sleep with someone because I wanted to get to the next level, so don't do it out there, um, stay away from drugs stay away from illegal things and god bless you guys all right well there you have it thank you so much for tuning in and watching eat this we hope you enjoyed this interview session because i definitely did until 